Season 3's roadmap for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone was released yesterday. Of course, the season is going to be launching next week on the 3rd of April. However, like we all expected, if you are a Zombies fan, you are going to have to wait an additional month because we are not getting literally any content until the reloaded mid-season update, just like was the case with Season 2. And this was previously leaked, and it seems like this is going to be the case for all future seasons as well. I did talk about in my prior video where I went over all of the leaks and rumors for this season that I was praying that this is going to change due to the backlash they received from season two, but apparently they're just not listening at all. I don't really know why this is the case, and it really is unfortunate that Modern Warfare 3 Zombies has been shafted so much so, and even the reloaded update itself has very minimal content, and the problem is, is that multiplayer is actually cooking this season. Unironically, we are getting literally six new multiplayer maps, Sledgehammer Games are doing this their bit. Of course, the game just launched with reused content, so it's good that they're trying to make up for it in the post-launch, and Warzone's being substantially supported as well, so it's really just Zombies fans that are unfortunately being left out again. Of course, we've had rumours that many of the developers have had to work on COD 2024 Zombies instead, so they're mainly focusing on that, so probably all of the content that we're going to be seeing in all of the future seasons is stuff that was predetermined ages ago, and there's not really going to be many surprises. Now, with the Season 2 Reloaded update, we did get a bit of a surprise that x streaks were added that was not part of the roadmap, so there is the possibility that we might get one or two surprises, but nothing too substantial. Maybe they'll finally add bank system, something that should have been in the game from the get-go, I digress. In this video, I want to go over all of the stuff that will be coming in this reloaded update, and I also want to share my thoughts on the content that's coming itself, because like I said, not only is it bad that it's coming in the reloaded update, but the content itself is very boring. Honestly, this is probably even a worse update than the Season 2 reloaded update, because it does seem like every single season from here on out from Modern Warfare Zombies is going to be pretty much exactly the same. We're going to get a new rift, a new story mission, a few new schematics, a new warlord, and that's basically it. And again, there's still no word on a stash increase as well, so they're probably not going to change the stash. I'm guessing they would have to rework a lot of the systems if they were to do that because they want it balanced, apparently, but that's definitely a big reason as to why the mode is dying. But before I get into all of the Zombies content, there is actually stuff for Zombies fans once again, unfortunately, in the other aspects of the mode, because over on Urzikstan, they will be opening up all of the bunkers. As you know, in Season 2, they actually opened up Bunker 5, and within it are cryogenic chambers, which are housing zombies that are being experimented on. I'm not exactly sure how this ties into the storyline, but this is probably leading up to some sort of live event or teasers for Black Ops Gulf War zombies. I'm guessing that's probably why. However, apparently all of the other bunkers are also going to be opening up with this Season 3 update. So, are they all going to be containing these chambers with zombies within? Are there going to be some Easter eggs pertaining to zombies within them? Also, the zombies could break out of these chambers. Maybe there's going to be zombie sections within each of these bunkers and kind of similar to what we had in Blackout back in the day where we had the zombies areas. And I'm really excited to see how this ties into the storyline though because someone is experimenting on these zombies maybe to harness Dark Eater powers or something like that. I've speculated that maybe this could be Rick Toffins doing or someone else. We're not exactly sure why, but I'm excited to see how this plays out in the future. Of course, this is all stuff set after the events of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, since that's a prequel in 2021. These events are taking place in 2024, real time in Warzone, so it's probably long after that storyline has concluded, meaning that we probably managed to successfully stop the zombie outbreak on Urzikstan, but someone has kept them in these chambers after those events. And I'm so excited to see how that ties into things in the future. It's probably going to tie into COD 2025 Zombies, rumored to be a Black Ops 2 sequel somehow. So that's one thing for Zombies fans to look out for that's not within the Zombies mode itself. And the other thing is regarding the Vortex mode, of course, we have the zombified versions of multiplayer maps, and I really hope that these maps get reused in the future for some sort of onslaught mode. Maybe we will have to wait until COD 2024 Zombies to actually see them, because we haven't seen them at all implemented in the Zombies mode itself so far, and it doesn't look like they're going to be coming at all. But now that we have the unified COD HQ engine, the maps can easily transfer between the different games games, so they can be in COD 2024 at ease. Anyways, there's going to be an event later in the season called Vortex versus a play on words of Virus mainframe. It's not system error, Virus has made its way into the Vortex, earn XP to unlock rewards, equip the Bacillus skin for the Tracer Pack Horseman, Virus Ultra skin for a boost. There are also going to be some new Godzilla and Kong bundles coming to the store, of course we have the Godzilla vs Kong event within Vanguard, and I thought that was actually really good in Warzone, but there is going to be another event pertaining to Godzilla 
coming at launch called the Battle for Hollow Earth. Discover the mysterious power of the monster versus mightiest titans, earn XP to unlock exceptional rewards, equip the Godzilla, Kong, Shimo and Scar King operator skins for a boost. Now we're not sure what the event is going to entail, it could just be a basic thing to earn XP and rewards and that's it. We don't actually know if Godzilla and Kong are going to physically show up in Warzone or Modern Warfare 3 like they did in Vanguard. For example, they could show up on Rebirth Island and I hope that they do have some sort of mode for this event with them because I really enjoyed the last one although some people were critical of it but I thought that it was so much fun. So hopefully it's more than just skins and we get a proper mode for it and the final interesting thing I want to mention before we get into the zombie stuff itself is regarding Rebirth Island which is of course returning in Warzone at last and canonically in the storyline it seems like it's going to be set in real time in 2024 however it's going to be overrun by Makarov's Connie this time around and that's another good thing about this season is it seems like it's finally going to actually have story relevance because with all of the seasonal cutscenes in Modern Warfare 3 so far all of the cutscenes have basically just been advertising the battle pass and skins with not really any story relevance and of course Modern Warfare 3's campaign was highly criticized with not really a proper conclusion and we don't know what Makarov is up to next so finally with season 3 we might be getting a proper seasonal cutscene showing what Makarov is up to on Rebirth Island and I'm excited for that and that could be setting up the stage for the sequel to this game whenever it releases in 2026 or something. Most likely he still wants to start World War 3 and that needs to happen. It happened in the original Modern Warfare 3 and the stakes just were not high enough in the reboot. Now back in the day we had Rebirth reinforced, it was set in 2021 and we know that Perseus from Cold War was still active and they were in control of the island but we have a description saying it seems Makarov's recent infiltration of Rebirth Island has not gone unnoticed. Overriding the systems redacted, one example being the phones redacted, related to keycards redacted, slightly modulated redacted, seen as building goodwill and trust redacted, codenamed EXE, suggests the contact be made immediately. So Makarov's Connie are going up against another secretive team that have been scouting and some people have been speculating they could be Atlas from Advanced Warfare considering we're having Advanced Warfare weapons in this season, they're even branded with the Atlas logo but I don't think that's the case, I think Perseus are going up against Connie even though they have somewhat similar beliefs that they want to usurp the western world and cause chaos and destruction in the west but they do have somewhat slightly differing opinions and beliefs and that's why for example Imran Zakaev was offered to join Perseus and he ended up declining and leaving them so it seems like Perseus may still be involved in the storyline and there are going to be bunker easter eggs once again on Rebirth Island and there's going to be multiple and it seems like we're going to be able to get key cards to unlock them similar to back in the day so I'm excited for that and of course I'll have guides and everything probably when the season launches and regarding the rebirth bunkers it seems like they similarly are actually going to have zombies within them as it mentions that there's going to be different canisters or chambers so it's probably going to be just like Urzikstan so who exactly has been monitoring and experimenting on zombies is it Connie is it Perseus we will have to wait and see I'm so excited though so yeah that's all of the important stuff that I thought you would be interested in before we get into the zombie stuff I just thought I would recap all of this stuff that seems very much in line with what Zombies fans would probably enjoy. But finally getting into the zombie stuff itself. Like I said, we pretty much already knew all of this stuff. In fact, there's pretty much even less than we were expecting. But the new Dark Ether story mission is all going to be focused around Dr. Ava Jansen. Again, which is what we already knew. An unknown force of disturbing power has its psychic tendrils wrapped tightly around Dr. Ava Jansen. The Doctor has been lured onto a new region of the Dark Ether under this malignant influence. And this is is pretty much exactly what we saw within Season 1's Dark Ether trailer, where we saw her being lured by the entity into the Dark Ether. I don't know why that was present in that trailer, and not the one for this one, because that didn't happen in the Season 1 one, which maybe suggests plans were changed. Was this going to happen sooner? I have no idea, but nevertheless, I've speculated in prior videos that I think that the entity isn't Samantha Maxis like we previously thought, but is in fact a reflection of Dr. Ava Jansen herself, a Dark Ether version of her. Since she has these powers, something probably happened during her childhood since her mother is seemingly Dr. Grey. And it seems like she's going to be lured by the other reflection of herself into the Dark Ether. Maybe they combine into one entity, who knows? Strike teams from Operation Deadbolt have converged to assist Sergei Ravenov as he attempts to locate and rescue Dr. Jansen from the unknown. Your expertise surviving and escaping the Dark Ether is required. The time has come to explore a new part of the Dark Ether and rescue Dr. Jansen and reading up for the Dark Ether gate hunt. So I'm actually excited for this mission, especially because this this could be the one where we finally have revealed the true entity of the entity to us and puts to rest the speculation.
information about Samantha Maxis like we all previously thought. At least, if it isn't revealed in this one, it's probably going to set up the stage for maybe the next one. And I'm wondering if we might not even get a full six seasons of content. I feel like maybe we will get six cutscenes in total. So maybe after this one will be the final one, the final story mission. There's actually lots of content left in the files, which is why it's so unfortunate that Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is not getting the substantial support because it does seem like from the files of the game, tons was planned post-launch and most of it has been cancelled. So the new Dark Ether Rift we're going to be getting is just like all of the others. The skybox looks awesome. It looks so cool. But yeah, there's not really much new. It's just a, once again a section from Almazra, this time being Zakra Hydroelectric. Honestly, the new Dark Ether sections are kind of redundant because it is just a reused section and they don't really offer too much different when it's the same thing every single season. We really do need a new map like Rebirth Island or Fortune's Key, but those are most likely not coming since the mode is receiving such poor support. But the third Dark Ether Rift is apparently just as ordinary as the past two. Expect a series of unlockable uh, objectives focusing on finding and attuning several relics, allowing access through the gate, accomplish these tasks to step into the ethereal voidscape and face the terrifying horrors lurking within, claiming valuable rewards if you survive. Now, apparently these Dark Ether relics, which are relating to Ava's past, are going to give you different powers. One being increased health, increased damage against the zombies, increased reload speed, and also a zombie vision one, which might be something like death perception. Squad up and help Operation Deadbolt continue to contain the onslaught of the undead. Naturally, you're also here to complete activities and contracts, discover arcane secrets, and secure some highly classified schematics. Now, they wrote this sentence twice in the blog, which I guess is just a mistake. So once again, just like the prior rifts, when you complete this mission, you'll be able to re-enter it by collecting different artifacts, which you place on the podiums. Apparently, this time, they're going to be these relics. Like I said, they're going to grant these powers and you can do the Elder Sigil as well. But the new schematics you're going to be able to unlock are actually really, really bad, unfortunately. These are the worst schematics yet, which is clear that they are just phoning it in. Compared to the ones we've had previously, these are really, really bad, especially the first one, which is Deadwire Detonators. Literally, there's no point in this schematic. All it allows you to do is have the Deadwire Ammo Mod on explosive weapons, but you could already do that anyway, so I literally don't see any purpose in this mod. And even if you couldn't do it anyways, it's still a useless schematic when you can compare it to all of the cool ones that have been added previously, who's going to use this? And this is just more evidence that we need a much greater stash because the caliber of schematics varies so much between really bad ones and really good ones. So obviously people are just going to use the really good ones. There needs to be different stashes for different types of schematics. For example, you might only have five slots for the absolute best ones. You might have 10 slots for the medium ones and then 20 slots for the really average ones, including perks and stuff like that. That's just my opinion. I think we need way more. Now, the next one is a golden mask filter. You will have noticed that all of these schematics are actually just items from the warlords. So this is just a gas mask with a shiny hue and impressive long-lasting effect. Gain a self-regenerating gas mask for the rest of the match. This comes in extremely handy for surviving zombie strongholds and any surprises in the rifts. And this will be useful for the red worm if you haven't done that already, but I'm sure most have by now. It does say it'll help with surprises in the rifts, so you're probably going to enter some infected zones within this new mission. And the other one is Sergeant Barrett's schematic. Your outcome no longer needs to be terminal when dealing with Sakaev's hired guns. Simply done the Sergeant Barrett to disguise yourself amongst the mercs and summon a trusty merc bodyguard who shadows you to the end. So again, it's not really that useful. You just have a friendly merc that will help you out. You already can get the Hellhound one, so I guess which one will be better. I'm guessing they'll be able to revive you and stuff as well. So it's just kind of an alternative version to the Hellhound that'll be able to shoot the other zombies. Semi-useful, but again, not really too great. So yeah, they really are phoning it in in this latter end of the seasons and we're on season three now. We still have three left so it's probably only worse from here. Like I said, I really feel like the next season is probably going to be the conclusion to the story just because the content is getting worse and worse. It's slowing down progressingly and it's going to grind to a halt sooner rather than later probably. It is unfortunate because this mode really could have been great if it was supported well post-launch. I'm really excited to see the cutscene though. That's the thing I'm most excited about. The storyline has been really cool. I've been making some interesting videos breaking down the cutscenes but other than that, not really too much going on, unfortunately. Now, once again, we're getting a new Warlord, which is Rainmaker. Additional caution is advised when operating in the southeastern part of the Urzikstan Exclusion Zone, as Warlord Rainmaker has commandeered and heavily upgraded the defences of his fortress on Raha Island, across the water from Shahin Manor. So this is where we expected him to spawn, but yes, that's true. As his codename suggests, this Warlord is an artillery and demolitions expert, and though his island compound is relatively easy to reach, stepping foot on the island with your limbs still attached may be more of a challenge. So he's been 
progressing Lee coming to this island and he's basically just increased his fortress. We could already see some armaments present here before, so which is why people were speculating he was going to be here. And he does have a Connie logo on his arm, so he seems to be part of Connie. Expect mortar rounds and RPG fire to descend on your squad with assault maneuvers made even more difficult due to the water surrounding Rainmaker's lair. Fast transport is recommended and once you disembark, try to ignore the chaos and focus on the fortress. Rainmaker's forces are expendable and he almost enjoys sacrificing his own men to take out intruders. With the fortress breach, slow your progress as the compound is brimming with tripwires and traps. Stepping on a mine at this point would be unfortunate, then prepare to change your game plan once you finally corner Rainmaker. He's capable of some nasty surprises you won't be expecting. So yeah, nothing really too crazy there. The Warlords are a pretty pointless update. It's so unfortunate what's happened with this mode. People basically just try it out for an hour or so. They complete the new mission. They might try out the new Warlord and then they're pretty much done with it. A lot of people aren't even bothering to do the Elder Sigil anymore with Season 2 because they just felt like, well, I've already done the one in Season 1. Is my experience really going to be that different? And what's even the point of grinding the new schematics when the stash is so limited, you're probably not going to even have much room to vary. And especially because the new schematics in Season 3 are so poor, no one's even going to bother grinding them out. At least with the Season 2 ones, they were worthwhile, especially the golden ammo. So yeah, future updates are just going to be more new rifts, more new warlords, and that's pretty much it. Despite the fact that there's loads of more objectives, side objectives, perks and stuff in the files, most likely all of this stuff has been scrapped. Who knows if the rumored PvP mode is ever going to release as well. People still think it will, but honestly, with the fact that it hasn't been announced for Season 3, it's probably unlikely, so we may never see it. And that might just be another thing that's been scrapped, because support is so limited and resources are so limited due to layoffs and Treyarch moving focus onto COD 2024 zombies, and the other studios just don't have enough developers to properly support it. Now, in this new mission, there is going to be a new version of the Disciple, so maybe this is going to be an EMP Disciple, similar to what we had with the variants in Season 2's mission. But yeah, that's pretty much it, so let me know in the comments what you are most excited for for this. Like I said, I'm really excited to see what happens in the seasonal cutscene. If Ava is revealed as the entity, what happens there? Do they merge together to form some powerful being that we're maybe going to have to fight in the next act? That could be the final one, for example. And I'm excited to see what's going on in Warzone as well regarding the bunkers and Rebirth and Urzikstan, how that ties into zombies and the future storyline. But with that being said, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.